Hello and welcome to our uh, reading of uh, Odyssey 18. Uh, we're recording from Istanbul, Turkey, a country closely associated with Homer and his works, but also a country that prides in its own uh, very old and still surviving tradition of uh, orally composed poetry and bards, the so-called Ozans or Ashiks. Uh, I'm Haris Theodorelis Rigas. I'm a lecturer for Greek and Latin at Koch University. I would like to start by introducing my co-readers for this evening, um, starting with uh, Associate Professor of Classics, Erman Gyoren from Istanbul University. Hello. Uh, we then have uh, an undergraduate from the same department, uh, Merti Nam. Greetings. Uh, followed by uh, an undergraduate at Koch University, Cemre Omer Aina. Hello, everyone. And uh, Ipek Tunjel, uh, an under, uh, a graduate from Koch University, now pursuing further studies in Germany. Hello. So I hope you enjoy this reading. El te de pipto cos pandemios hos cata astu, pto queues quitaques meta de prepegasteri marge, as de ces pagemen cae piemen ud oienis, ud debie e dos de mala megas en hora astae, arnai osto nomesque, togarte topot nia meter, Ec genetes, iron de neoi cicles con hapantes, hunne capange lesce cion hote putis anogoi. Osrel ton odusea dioceto hoio domoio, cae min ne cion ne peaptero enta proseuda. E cegeron proturu medeta cacae podos helce. Uc aies otide moi epi lis dus in apantes. Hel cemenae de celontae, ego daescu no mai empes. Al anameta canoin eriscae cersi genetae. Pondar hypodraidon prosepe polumetis odusseus. Dae moni ute tisse res doca con uta goreuo. Ute tin aptoneo domenae cae polla nelonta. Udos tam poterus ho de ceisetae ude ti secre. Allo trion ptonein. Toceis de moi einae alletes. Os peregon ol bonde te oi me lus in opasdei. Cersi de metili en procalis de o me me coloseis. Nese geron per eon ste tos cae ceilea purso, haimatos, hessuci edan emoi cae mallon et eie, aurion umem gartis supostre psestae o io. Deuteron esme garon laertia de odiusseos, ton de colossa menos prosepone en iros aletes. O popoi hos homo lobros epitrocaden agoreue, grei caminoi isos, on anca cametis saimen, copton ampotereisi camai de que pantas odontas, gnat mon excela saimi suos hos lei boteires. Sdo saimun hina pantes epigno os in cae hoide, mar namenus. Hos dan su meotero andri makoio. Hos hoi men proparoite tu raon, hypse laon. Udu epixe stupan tu madon ocrionto. Toi index une ecieron menos antinoio. Hedu dar ec gelassas metepone in neste resin. O piloi, umem poti parosto iuton et tucte, hoi enter polente os ega genesto de doma. 
Hoc sei nos te cairo seris de ton alleloin, cersin macesa stai allax unelasum en oca. Hos epatoi darapantes aneix angelo ontes, ampidara to cusca coei monasegere tonto. Toi sin dantinos metepe eu peteos huios. Che clutem eum nesteres agenores opra tiepo. Gasteres aedae gon createn puritas epidorpoi. Cat temetac nis seste cae haematos emples santes. Ho poteros de que ni ce se crei sonte genetae, ta onen que te leis in anastas autos celesto. Ai e aut he min meta daesat ai ut et in alon. Pto conesso mis gesta e asumen aites sonta. Antinous böyle dedi. Bu söz taliplerin hoşuna gitti. Çok akıllı odisi grup şöyle dedi. Genç bir adamla savaşması görülmüş şey mi? Arkadaşlar yoksulluktan iki büklüm olmuş bir ihtiyarın. Dayağı göze almaya beni şu kör alası karın zorlar. Siz hepiniz güçlü bir antla söz verin bana. Iros'a yardım için hiç kimse kaldırmayacak ağır elini. Amansızca vurup boyun eğdirmeyecek bana zorla. Böyle dedi. Hepsi onun istediği gibi ant içti. Ant içip tamamlan, tamamlattıktan sonra yeminlerini aralarında tanrısal güçlü Telemakos söz aldı. Dedi ki, seni bu adamla dövüşmeye itiyorsa yaman gönlün, korkma akaların hiçbirinden. Yabancı, çok insana karşı komalı, sana el kaldıracak olan. Bana karşı komalı önce, seni konuklayana karşı, sonra da beni destekleyen iki krala karşı komalı. Aklı başında olan Antinoos'la Evrimakos. Böyle konuştu. Hepsi de onayladılar bu sözü. O ara Odysseus kaldırıp sardı çaputlarını beli altına. Çıkardı ortaya güzel iri bacaklarını. Geniş omuzları göründü, göğsü, güçlü kolları. Atene yanında durmuş, güçlendirmişti ellerin güdücüsünü. Bütün talipler ağızları açık kala kaldılar. Biri döndü ötekine şöyle dedi. Tamam, bitti Eros. Aradığı belayı buldu şimdi. Çaputların altından ne bacaklar çıkardı. İhtiyara bak. Böyle dediler birbirlerine. Eros'un ağzına geldi yüreği. Uşaklar soydular onu. Getirdiler zorla. Korkudan kol ve bacaklarındaki etler titriyordu. Antinos böyle görünce onu çıkıştı. Dedi ki, yoksulluktan bitkin düşmüş bir yaşlı adam önünde sen madem bu kadar titreyecek, korkacaktın. Koca öküz. Hiç aydın anından. Yaşamasaydın daha iyiydi. Bak sana diyeyim. Gerçek olacak bu dediklerim. Bu adam yenerse seni, üstün gelirse sana seni bir kara gemiye atıp karşı yakaya göndereceğim. Tek mil ölümlerin en kötüsü Kral Eketos'un yanına. Amansız tuncuyla burnunu ve kulaklarını kesecek o senin. Erkekliğini koparıp atacak köpeklere. Yedirecek çiğ çiğ. Böyle konuşurken o başladı İros daha çok titremeye. Sürdüler onu ortaya. Her ikisi de kaldırdılar kollarını. O sıra çok çekmiş tanrısal Odysseus düşündü. Bir vuruşta canını alıp onu yere çalsın mıydı? Yoksa daha az vurup yere sermekle mi yetin, yetinsindi? İkinci yol çok daha iyi göründü ona. Yavaş vurursa akalar anlamayacaktı kim olduğunu. Elleri kalktı. Eros Odysseus'un sağ avuzuna vurdu. Odysseus da yumruğunun altına, boynuna. Kırıldı kemikleri. Kızıl kan fışkırdı ağzından. Böğürerek yıkıldı tozun toprağın içine. Dişleri kenetli, yerde tepindi durdu. Taşkın talipler kollarını kaldırıp güldüler katıla katıla. Odysseus da tuttu, irosu ayağından sürükledi dışarı. Götürdü onu dış kapıların önündeki avluya. Dayadı orada başını duvara. Verdi eline değneğini ve yükseltip sesini şu kanatlı sözleri söyledi ona. En taltoynun eso. Su aste kınas paperökon. Mede sügek seynon kaip tokon. 
koiran o seinai. Lukro se on. Me pohti ka kon kai mezgone paure. Era kai am pomoisin, a eike ja balle to peren. Tuk na rogalen, en best topos eien a orte. Abstogeb odoni on katar hedeto. Toi disan eiso, hedugela ontes, kai de kana onte pesi. Zdeus toi doi exeine, kai atana toi te oialloi, hotti maliste teleis, kai toi pilon epleto tymoi, hostoton ton analton, ale telvein apepausas, endemoi, taka garmin, anaxomen epeironde. Eis eketon basilea, proton de lemona panton. Hos arepan, kairen dekle edoni diuos o tusseus. Antino os tarahoi, megalen para gastera tegen. En pleien, knises tekai haimatos. Ampino moste, artus e kaneoio, duo parete kena eiras. Kai depa i kruseoi dei disketo, tone sente. Kaire pater og seine, genoi totoi espero piso, olvos atarmen nunge, kakois ekeai pone esi. Tonda panei bomenos, prosepe polume tisotus seus. Antinom, e malamoi, doke eis pep nymeno seinai, toi o garkai patros, e pei kleos estlon akouon. Ni son do liki eia, e untemen ap neionte. To dek pasi genestai, e pe teit andri e oikas. To ne katoi ereo, syde synteo, kaime akouson. Ouden akid noteron, gaia trepe antropoio, panton hossa te gaia nepi, neiei te kai herpei. O men garto te pesi, kakon peises tai opiso, oprare ten parekosi te oi, kai gouna torore. Al hote de kai lugra, te oi makares telesonsi, kai ta perei a ekas domenos, tet le oti tüm oi. Toi os garno osestin, e piktonion antropon, Hoyonet emar agesi, pater androonte te onte. Kai gare gopo temellon, en andrasin olvio seinai, pol la datas talereksa, bi ei kai karte iweikon. Patrite moi pisunos, kai emoisi kasignatoisin, to me tis pote pampan, aner ate mistio seie. Al hogesi gei, Dora te oon ekoi, hotsi didoien. Hoi horo omnes teras, atastala me kanoontas, ktemata keirontas, kajati mazdontas akoitin, andros on ouketi peemi pilon, kai patridos aies, deron apessestai, malades kedon. Alla se daimon, voi kadu peksagagoi, Mäet anti aseja se keinoi. Hoppoten oste seje, pilen es patrida gaian. O gara nai mo tege, diakrine es ta jo iho, mnes teeras kai keinon. Epeike me latron ypelte. Öyle dedi. Bal gibi şaraptan, tanrınlara sundu ve içti. Sonra da verdi tasarların gidücüsünü. Ampinomos yerine döndü. Kaygılıydı yüreği. Başını sallıyor, gönlü kötü şeyler tasarlıyordu. Ama gene de kurtulamayacaktı ölümden. Athene onu Telemakos'un kargısına bağlamıştı bir kere. Gitti, oturdu az önce ayrılığı tahtın üstüne. Gök gözlü tanrıça Athene, o sıra. Ikarios'un kızı, uslu, akıllı Penelopeia'nın aklına koydu. Talihlere görünüp gönüllerini alüllendirmesini. Böylece 
Kocası ve oğlu ona daha çok saygı besleyecekti. Gülmeye zorladı Penelope'ye kendini. Ve kahya kadına dedi ki, Bilirsin Eurynome, oldu malzı çok tiksinirim onlardan. Ama tam şu sıra onlara görünmek istedi canım. Bir çift söz söylemek isterim olmada. Bu azgın heriflere karışmasın bu kadar. Şimdi yüzüne gülerler ama arkadan kötülük kurarlar. Kahya kadın Eurynome de karşılık verdi. Dedi ki, doğru bu dediklerin kızım, çok doğru. Hadi git konuş bunlar oğlunda, bir şey saklama ondan. Ama yüzünü yıka önce, aldık sür yanaklarını. Ağlamaktan yüzün gözün şiş, öyle çıkma. Çünkü süresiz yas tutmak çok kötü bir şey. Bıyıkları terlemiş oğlunun, olmuş delikanlı. Ah o yaşa bir gelse, derdin ya hani. Uslu akıllı Penelope'ye da karşılık verdi. Dedi ki, beni sevdiğinden söylersin, bilirim Eyrun Ome. Ama bırak, yüzümü yıkayacak, allık süreceğim de ne olacak? Olimpos'ta oturan tanrılar benim güzelliğimi. Kocam tez giden gemileri bindiği gün yok ettiler. Şimdi sen bana Autono ile Hippodameia'yı gönder. Gelsinler, benimle birlikte onlar da insinler büyük sofraya. Utanırım ben erkekler arasında tek başına girmekten. İhtiyar kadın da gitti, evin öbür köşesine. Çağırdı hizmetçileri. Haydi tez gelin, dedi. Ama başka şeyler düşündü gökgözlü tanrıcı Athene. Döküverdi Karyos kızının gözlerine tatlı uykuyu. Olduğu yerde gevşedi Penelopeya'nın tekmil bedeni. Başı arkaya kaydı ve daldı tatlı uykuya. O ara Tanrıça ona ölümsüz armağanlar bağışladı. Akalar yüzüne bakmaya doyamasınlar diye. Önce sildi o güzellik suyla güzelim yüzüne. Karitlerin iç açan kuralarına katıldığı zamanlar güzel çelenkli Kıbrıs tanrıçası sürerdi onu. Tanrıçayı daha iyi gösterirdi bu ölsü, daha boylu. Ve gösterirdi tenini, fil dişi tozundan daha ak. Ulu Tanrıça bu işleri gördü ve yok oldu gitti. Akkol hizmetçiler de çağrıya uya- çıka geldiler. Penelopeya da uyandı tatlı uykuda. Yanaklarını elleriyle uva uva konuştu. Dedi ki Autika nün hiname keto duyromene katatümon. Ay yo naptinipto posios poteu sapiloyo. Pantoyen areten epe eksodos ey yanakayo. Hos pamene katebain hypero via sigaleonta. Uk oye hamateke kai antipoloi duheponto. He dote de mnesteras ati keto dia gunai kon, stera para stat monte geos tuka poie toio. Anta pareia ons komene li para kredenna. Antipolos dara hoi kedne hekaterte paresto. Pon dau tu lito gunat ero dara tümon eterkten. Pantes dere santo parai leke esikli tena. He dau te lemakon prosefoneen on pidon pilion. Te lemak u kipi toi prenes empedoi u de noema. Pais ete on kai malon eni presikerde enomas. Nyn do te de megas esikai hebes metro hikaneis. Kai kentis pai jegonon emmenai oidiu andros, hes megetos kai kallos oromenos, ai lotrios pos. U keti toi prenes eisine naisimoi uude noema. Hoi jon de tode ergon eni megaroisine tykte, hos ton kseinon easat aikis teemenai puutos. Hos nyn eiti kseinos en hämet heroisi domoisi, hämenos hode patoi ryk taktios ex allegeines, soi kaiskos lobe temet antropoisi peloito. 
ten dal te lemakos hep numenos antion euda. Me tereme tomen use nemes somai ke kolosta. Autare go tu moi noeo kai oida hekasta. Est la te kai takereia paros de tinepios eia. Alla toi uduna mai pep numena panta noesai. Ekar me plesus si pareme noi allo tan allos. Hoi de kaka proneontes emoi duk eisin arogoi. Umem toi kseinu de kai iru molos et tykte. Nesteron ioteti. Viei doge perteros eia. Aigar, os deu te pater kai Atenaie, kai Apollo, huto nyn nesteres den hemet heroisi domoisi, ne uljen ke palasted memenoi, hoimenen aulei, hoiden toste domoio, le luto de guia he kastu, hos nyn iros keinos et aulei jesi tyresin, Hestai neus tasdon kepale, metuonti e oikos, udortos tenai dynatai posin uden estai, oikad hope hoi nostos epei pila guia lelunitai. Thus they spoke to one another. But Eurymachus addressed Penelope and said, Daughter of Icarius, why is Penelope? If all the Achaeans throughout Yasi and Argos could see thee, even more wooers would be feasting in our halls from tomorrow on, for thou excelst all women in comeliness and stature, and the wise heart within thee. Then wise Penelope answered him, Eurymachus, all excellence of mine, both of beauty and of form, the immortals destroyed on the day when the Argives embarked for Ilios, and with them went my husband Odysseus. If he might be but come and watch this life of mine, greater would be my fame and fairer. But now I am in sorrow. So many woes has some god brought upon me. Verily, when he went forth and left his native land, he clasped my right hand by the wrist and said, Wife, I deem not that the well-grieved Achaeans will all return from Troy safe and unscathed. For the Trojans, men say, are men of war, hurlers of the spear and drawers of the bow and drivers of swift horses, such as most quickly decide the great strife of equal war. Therefore, I know not whether the god will bring me back or whether I shall be cut off there in the land of Troy. So, have thou charge of all the things here. Be mindful of my father and my mother in the halls even as thou art now, or yet more, while I am far away. But when thou shalt see my son a bearded man, Wed whom thou wilt, and leave thy house. So he spoke. And now all this is being brought to pass. The night shall come when a hateful marriage shall fall to the lot of me, accursed, whose happiness Zeus has taken away. But herein has bitter grief upon, come upon my heart and soul. For such as yours was never the way of wooers heretofore. They who are fain to woo a lady of worth and the daughter of a rich man and vie with one another, those br bring of themselves cattle and goodly flocks, a banquet for the friends of the bride, and give to her glorious gifts. But they do not devour the livelihood of another without atonement. So she spoke, and the much enduring Goodly Odysseus was glad, because she drew from them gifts, and beguiled their souls with gentle words. 
but her mind was set on other things. Then Antinous, son of Eupithes, spoke to her again and said, Daughter of Icarius, wise Penelope, as for gifts, if any man of the Achaeans is minded to bring them hither, do thou take them, for it is not well to refuse a gift, but for us we will go neither to our lands nor else whither, until thou weddest him whoever is best of the Achaeans. So spoke Antinous, and his word was pleasing to them, and each man sent forth a herald to bring his gifts. For Antinous he brought a large and beautiful robe, richly broidered, and in it were golden brooches, twelve in all fitted with curved clasps. And a chain did another straightway bring to Eurymachus, one cunningly wrought of gold, strung with amber beads, bright as the sun. A pair of earrings his squires brought to Eurydamas, with three clustering drops, and great grace shone therefrom. And out of the house of Lord Pisander, son of Polyctor, his squire brought a necklace, a jewel exceeding fair. So of the Achaeans, one brought one fair gift and one another, but she thereafter, the fair lady, went up to her upper chamber and her handmaids lay bare for her the beautiful gifts. But the wooers turned to dance and gladsome song and made them merry and waited for evening to come up. And as they made merry, dark evening came upon them. Presently they set up three braziers in the hall to give them light. And round about them placed dry wood, long since seasoned and hard and newly split with the axe. And in the spaces between they set torches, and in turn the handmaids of Odysseus, of the said fast heart, kindled the flame. Then Zeus born Odysseus, of many wiles, himself spoke among the maids, and said, Maidens of Odysseus, that has long been gone, go to the chambers where your honored queen abides, and twist the yarn by her side, and make glad her heart, as you sit in the chamber or card the wool with your hands. But I will give light to all these men, for if they wish for fair thorn dawn, they shall in no wise outdo me. I am one that can endure much. So he spoke, and the maids broke into a laugh, and glanced at one another, and fair-cheeked Melantho rated him shamefully. Melantho, whom Dolius begot, but whom Penelope had reared and cherished as her own child, gave her playthings to her heart's desire. Yet so, she had at heart no sorrow for Penelope, but she loved Eurymachus and was wont to lie with him. She then rated Odysseus with reviling words, Wretched stranger, thou art but a crack-brained fellow, unwilling to go to a smithy to sleep, or to a common lodge, but practiced here continually, unabashed in the company of many lords, and hast no fear at heart. Surely wine has mastered thy wits, or else thy mind is ever thus, that thou dost babble idly. Art thou beside thyself become thou hast beaten that vagrant Iris? Beware, lest presently another better than Iris shall rise up against thee, to beat thee about the head with heavy hands, and befoul thee with streams of blood, and send thee forth from the house. Then, with an angry glance from beneath his brows, Odysseus of many wiles answered her, Presently shall I go yonder, thou shameless thing, and tell Telemachus, since thou speakest thus, that on the spot he may cut thee limb from limb. So he spoke, and with his words scattered the woman who fled through the hall, and the limbs of each were loosened beneath her in terror, for they thought that he spoke the truth. But Odysseus took a stand by the burning braziers to give light, and looked upon all the men. Yet other things was the heart within, within him pondering, things that were not to be un unfulfilled. But Athena would, not, would in no wise suffer the proud wooers to abstain from bitter outrage. That pain might sink yet deeper into the heart of Odysseus, son of Lartes. So among them, Eurymachus, son of Polybus, began to speak, jeering at Odysseus and making mirth for his companions. Hear me, wooers of glorious queen, 
that I may say what the heart in my breast bids me. Not without the will of the gods has this man come to the palace of Odysseus. In any case, there is a glare of torches from him. From his head, for there is no hair on it, no, not a trace. Therewith he called to Odysseus, sacker of cities, Stranger, wouldst thou have a mind to serve for hire, if I should take thee into service on an outlying farm? Thy shall be assured thee, gathering stones for walls and planting tall trees? There would I provide thee with food the year through, and clothe thee with raiment, and give thee sandals for thy feet. But since thou hast learned only deeds of evil, thou wilt not care to busy thyself with work, but art minded rather to go skulking through the land, that thou mayest have wherewith to feed thy insatiate belly. Then Odysseus of many wiles answered him and said, Eurymachus, I would that we too might have a match in working in the season of spring, when the long days come, and mowing the grass, I with a curved scythe in my hands, and thou with another like it, and that the grass might be in plenty, so that we might test our work, fasting till late evening. Or I would again that there were oxen to drive, the best there are, tawny and large, both well-fed with grass, of like age and like power to bear the yoke, tireless in strength. And that there were a field of four acres, and the soil should yield before the plow, then shouldst thou see me, whether or no I could cut a straight furrow to the end. Or I would again that this day the son of Kronos might bring war upon us from whence he would, and I had a shield and two spears and a helmet all of bronze that fitted well my temples. Then shouldst thou see me mingling amid the foremost fighters, and wouldst not prate, taunting me with this belly of mine. But right insolent art thou, and thy heart is cruel, and forsooth thou thinkest thyself to be some great man and mighty, because thou consortest with few men and weak. If but Odysseus might return, and come to his native land, soon would yonder doors, right wide though they are, prove all too narrow for thee in thy flight out through the doorway. So he spoke, and Eurymachus waxed the more wroth at heart, and with an angry glance from beneath his brow spoke to him winged words. Wretch, presently will I work thee evil, that thou pratest thus, unabashed in the presence of many lords, and hast no fear at heart. Surely wine has mastered thy wits, or else thy mind is ever thus, that thou dost babble idly. Art thou beside thyself, because thou hast beaten the vagrant Eris? So saying, he seized a footstool, but Odysseus sat down at the knees of Amphinomus of Dulichium in fear of Eurymachus, and so Eurymachus struck a cupbearer on the right hand, and the wine jug fell to the ground with a clang, and the bearer groaned and fell backwards in the dust. Then the wooers broke into uproar throughout the shadowy halls, and thus would one man speak with a glance at his neighbor, would that yon stranger had perished elsewhere on his wanderings, or ever he came hither, then should he never have brought among us all this tumult. But now we are brawling about beggars, nor shall there be any joy in our rich feast, since worse things prevail. Then among them spoke the strong and mighty Telemachus, Strange sirs, ye are mad, and no longer hide that ye've eaten and drunk. Some god surely is moving you. Nay, now that you have well feasted, go to your homes and take your rest when your spirits bid you yet I drive no man forth. So he spoke, and they all bit their lips, and marveled at Telemachus, that he spoke so boldly. But Amphinomus spoke, and addressed them. He was the son of the noble prince Nisus, son of Aristius. Friends, no man in answer to what has been fairly spoken would wax wroth and make reply with wrangling words. Abuse not any more this stranger, nor any one of the slaves that are in the house of divine Odysseus. Nay, come, let the bearer pour drops for libation in the cups, that we may pour libations, and go home to take our rest. As for this stranger, let us leave him in the halls of Odysseus to be cared for by Telemachus, for to his house he has come. So said he, and the words that he spoke were pleasing to all. Then, a bowl was mixed for them by the Lord Mullius, the herald from Dulichium, who was squire to Amphinomus, and he served out to all, coming up to each in turn, and they made libations to the blessed gods and drank the honey-sweet wine. Then, when they had made libations and had drunk to their heart's content, they went their way, each man to his own home to take their rest. <laughs>